Hey, it's Nathan, and I just got done finishing up Andor, so I just wanted to give it a quick review. So, at a glance, Andor is a grounded retread into the struggle between uh, the Empire and the Rebellion, although it dives deeper into the forays of each of the factions this time around. It features a no boundaries but noble main character who finds himself in a variety of tricky situations but ultimately becomes entrenched in this galactic conflict. It also brings back a political element uh, to the franchise found mainly in the prequel episodes, uh, which does add a level of intrigue and complexity uh, to the storytelling. The characters were all very well written and constructed uh, with complex layers, and many even had full character arcs uh, throughout the show. I did, however, find myself liking and growing more enveloped with the characters other than Andor himself, but this could partly be because of how well the other characters were written and the brilliance of their acting prowess. In fact, Andor seems almost unlikable at the beginning, um, you know, especially after he seemingly ruthlessly kills someone um, in the very first episode. However, he does warm up throughout the show, and his nobility does shine through eventually. You know, as a side note, I had no qualms uh, whatsoever uh, with the main character being a minority. Um, I'll just say, you know, just, um, you know, make these uh, characters a little bit more likable. You know, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. You know, just, uh, just make them likable. What do you need? I thought Cyril Karn's character might have been the most brilliant of them all. Uh, and some might even call him the main character uh, due to his extensive and deep uh, character journey and his multifaceted uh, personality. Mon Mothma was also a great one, uh, you know, with uh, the welcome return uh, to the political side of uh, Star Wars. Although these, uh, you know, political storylines might add some confusion to the viewer, uh, it also adds intricacy and layering to the plot and to the world building, or galaxy building, uh, you know, some might say. <laughs> Andy Serkis' performance and character was absolutely phenomenal, to say the least. You know, he always adds tension and realism to, you know, his, his roles and to his part of the story. And, you know, really elevated the show uh, to another level. Everybody calm down! The writing and plot uh, does end up delivering overall, uh, but it did seem a little scattered uh, throughout the watch. Uh, I, you know, I found myself wondering what the actual goals were and kind of what each character was trying to achieve, uh, especially with Andor. I have, though, noticed this with many recent shows lately. The main character seems to kind of merely just be wanderers uh, who end up finding things to do, uh, as opposed to there kind of being a mainline mission that drives this character uh, forward throughout. Some of the settings uh, does seem to change with no real purpose as well at times. Uh, you know, at one point he would be at a technologically advanced uh, cyberpunk planet, then he would be back home, uh, then he would suddenly be on some beach planet, uh, then all of a sudden he'd be in a prison. You know, uh, although I will say uh, the prison segment was definitely my favorite part of the show. Although prison sequences, uh, you know, may just lend itself to a fantastic film. The script uh, was fantastic uh, with noticeable attention to detail and effort put into it. You know, no lines felt out of character and the writing incorporated lore uh, that helped make the Star Wars universe and Andor feel like a real living galaxy. The settings were all very well done. Although Andor's home planet did seem quite familiar with practically every single other piece of Star Wars content, especially recently, the return to Coruscant was brilliant and well orchestrated with noticeable attention to detail. Seeing the towering buildings, flying vehicles, and futuristic vistas uh, were a very welcome sight to behold. The tone was definitely a bit bleak and downtrodden throughout, and although there were patches of more upbeat and optimistic areas here and there. Lack of charm seems to be one of the main issues with recent cinema nowadays, and especially with the Star Wars franchise. I never really find myself rooting for a character anymore, and much of the atmosphere of these films seems pretty grim and, and dark. I did find myself engaged with Cyril's character, although he might have one of the bleakest journeys of the lot. <laughs> However, this was most probably purposeful uh, with Andor, uh, you know, the tone. And in this case, it does add a more realistic take um, into the Star Wars franchise. The music was interesting, uh, seemed varied with his conception, and did assist with the bleak tone, although this was again probably deliberate. The main theme was very well made, 
and the filmmakers were adept at incorporating it throughout the show, creating many powerful moments. All in all, it was an enjoyable watch, and featured a more grounded and realistic look into the conflict between the Empire and the Rebellion. Uh, the characters were all well-crafted, and the actors and actresses uh, really delivered uh, with their performances. The return of Coruscant and the political element was welcome and added another layer to the already multifaceted storyline. Um, you know, some of the plot seemed a little scattered. Andor's home planet locale does get a little tiresome to see again and again. And there was, most importantly, and as per usual, a lack of any charm in this latest rendition of Star Wars. However, overall, it was an intriguing and fascinating journey back into the Star Wars universe, and I altogether enjoyed my time here in a galaxy far, far away.